as someone with as many hours as I have logged touring paleo homes, I've seen things with the exception of the house that we're about to see. This particular person happens to be one of our moderators. It's kind of interesting because when we added moderators, they had already booked a tour. So now we're coming up on some times where this particular person has been a moderator for us for some time. They have a full tour with me, but you know her as a Velociraptor. I'm really excited about this one. Now in Paleo, we have the option to have multiple plots. And there's some of you out there, I'm sure you probably agree, your home is your baby. It's the place that you always come back to. It's your main plot. One of the most fascinating things about Practicore is that this is how you would decorate in real life. There's four different design cores. Vel has something to show you, though. She's really excited to show off her bug courtyard. Get your thumbs ready, like the video, and let's get started, shall we? All right, so I'm here with Vel and literally flying in. You don't look like yourself today, Vel. There, is that better? Yeah. <laughs> no, you can wear whatever you want. Wow. Oh, I, just, I just had to show off a little bit. I, hey, you know, I mean, if there's one place to show off, it's going to be in Paleo. On my tour, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's exactly what it's for. Well, Vel, uh, you're no stranger to tours. You're my tour guide where we go. All right. Um, this is actually my first real tour, not real tour, full tour, I should say. Yes. Like, like, whoa. I mean, you have like a whole wall and everything. Oh, yeah. I needed a fence that was a, a real fence. I didn't want the little the little shorties they gave us. I know. Uh, this is this is wild, though, because I mean, it, it works really well with the Maji Market stuff. And I'm sensing you have a color theme going on. Uh, just a little bit, not not as much on the inside, but definitely the blue. The blue carries through pretty much. Yeah, everything. almost. I'm following we're gonna you. Go to the, we're going to go to the log cabin, the guest cabin, and there's not so much yellow there. More orange. It's kind of a fall vibe. OK, cool. Ooh. There's one of the babies. Oh, yes. Respect for the babies. I feel like the babies are kind of like, you know, old samurai movies. Like, you can only go so far. You can only get totally. this close to the emperor. I like the transition that we go from the blue to the pinks and purples. Thank you. I love those mixed hydrangeas. Yeah. Really all the hydrangeas, but those were really special when they came in. Oh, yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. Little guest cabin. I love it. It's one of the spaces that's um, a little bit more sparsely decorated than I would like, but I am at item limit cap. So you got to work with what you got. Yeah, no, totally. I understand. I think it's cool, though, that you got. This is like quintessential practical. You've got lots of things here. It's it's full, but it's neat. And mm -hmm. you can tell you can <laughs> words. You can still tell a story. Even with realistic decorating, you know, oh, absolutely. There are a lot of the different design cores out there that uh, try to pack things in or they focus more on uh, sight lines, but this is really cool. I like this kitchen. And it is a fully functional kitchen, which is one of the reasons I figured out I was Practicor. Uh, this is not, you know, an especially fancy looking kitchen. It doesn't have anything special about it, um, although it was built way back. I mean, this this plot has been in the works for almost an entire year. Of course, I had the very first <clears throat> harvest house little log cabin plot that we all start with after we um, get the harvest house. But once I tore down that one little room, I, this has been in progress ever since. Yeah. And then, I mean, let's not let's not minimize this at all, because a fully functional kitchen and B, like 
you also have you also got lighting everywhere. I mean, it's yeah, like for for my plot, like this is my plot. This is my space. This isn't something that I've done as like a fun decorating exercise necessarily. Like this is my home in Palea. Yeah. So for me, it's important that it be functional, um, but also aesthetic. You know. Um, yeah. There's one thing here, actually, I will point out that you don't think, I don't think you can actually do this anymore. Okay. Well, let's but come behind back these there. ovens here are um, chests, the chests that you can gather. And at one point, you could lightly clip them together the way that I have. Right. And so I, I did that. I made a wall of them uh, with the doorway open and then closed up the doorway because uh, this harvest house is actually attached to my workshop as well. But ah. I didn't want there to be a between space between my cabin and my workshop. I wanted them to be very distinctly separate. And right. I just didn't want a harvest house ceiling in my workshop. It, it just wasn't the right vibe. You know, kind of looks like a garage door. <laughs> a little bit. I never thought of it that way. Um, ah, I feel like brain, you don't you know, know that it's there. It almost camouflages a little bit. Yeah, it really does. It really does. But yeah, last time I tried to do a wall out of those, um, I couldn't clip them together as closely, and I hadn't done anything special in order to do that. So they must have changed the uh, like the box on the item. It's fun though because like there's there's certain things in Palea that you might have been able to do before, but with with a, like when you can't, you're just like, well, I'm never touching that again. Exactly. Um, and I know because I actually did end up taking down, uh, I had it closed off on the workshop side as well. Um, so it was just a hallway, two hallways closed off on either end. Um, and I couldn't put it back together. But thankfully, by then we had building blocks. So I was able to to do it that way. Yeah. And I but really I love... don't think it looks as nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I really love the how the landscapes have changed the plots like this this little bathroom nook here is super cool thank you yeah it actually used to be on the other side of this room i did swap it to take advantage of the view um, but there is a space we're going to go to my workshop next and there's a space in there that has always been in that spot ever since i made it and it just looked at a wall of rocks before and now it has one of the best views, I think, if not the best view on my not, entire plot. Not you totally like creeping through the uh, the blind here. <laughs> right. It's like the telescope. You're just like your eyes are just like peeking over. I was like, oh, dang. <laughs> and this is my money maker. This is my garden. This is where Ooh. I make all my money in paleo pretty much i spend so much time decorating and building that i really don't spend a lot of time hunting mining bug stuff you know i do that stuff sometimes and and if i need to but this is i make you know probably 25k plus a day from my wow garden. yeah pay close attention to the way that this is laid out because uh you know my wife ellie ellie jelly took note of this and Vel has converted her to be a, a Palean mogul. I really like how you have the the leaves here and you have the stone path just kind of placed around because that's a natural tree, isn't it? It is not, actually. Um, but what it is, is we'll pretend it there is. was... Um, <laughs> I, I actually spent several days, like not the whole entire day, but a long time putting down these terracotta pavers and yeah. getting them to line up exactly the way that I needed them to, which is very tricky. Um, you can kind of tell where they're, you know, joined correctly and where they're kind of split if you pay attention. Yeah, Most yeah, people yeah. Don't pay attention. Um, but I had a weird gap here and I couldn't recon reconcile it anywhere. It was like one of those puzzle games where you have to slide <laughs> things into place. Yes. And I had like one little, it wasn't even a full square. It was just a little rectangle. And I said, you know what? I can put a tree on it and I can hide, I can hide it. And <laughs> I did have a tree here before actually. Um, and so not in this exact spot, but very, very close. And I had liked it and wanted to keep it. So it, it actually worked out perfectly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. It, it looks intentional. So that is cool. Where to next? 
All right, so over here we have the workshop. It is, again, very sparse, but it is very practical. And I would have way more stuff in here if I could. Oh, yeah. Peak efficiency. This is, Now, again, I see this is like the, the other side, right? Yep, that's the other side. So it that's used to have um, other chests, but now it just has building blocks. It's still a good look, though. Ah, oh, I like... I like this. I like this a lot. This is very... Yeah. Like, okay, this is kind of... You have platform. certifications in uh, industrial efficiency kind of place, mm -hmm. you know. I run a clean shop around here. But yeah, this little nook over here, this is the one I was saying just used to look at a wall of rocks with the original landscape. And when I swapped it out for the Kilima Heights landscape, I came in here and looked and I was like, oh my gosh. This is your thinking space. This is where things happen. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, I love and how the landscapes have like changed I everything. I love that little room. It has so many little things that spin and open and close and you can turn the fan off and on and, you know, it's just fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's the whole point of Paley is to is to have fun. All right. This is actually one of the last spaces that I did over here. My little outdoor party space. Oh. One of my favorite things is just getting to see firsthand as we add new items into the game, how homes are evolving and you know that I don't, I see homes like blind, uh, mm -hmm. but it's still cool though, just to kind of see as we add new, new items, how people have incorporated them. And if you keep up with, if you keep up with my videos, uh, at least the latest ones, you'll have all of the latest inspo based off of, you know, how the updates land, which is pretty For sure. cool. And I'm, I'm definitely more of a decorator than a builder i mean i like laying out um houses but i'm not as good with the building blocks um or i should say like as intricate and fancy as some of the other people are with the building blocks but i've had some fun playing with them for sure um, yeah and the, pool, the pool is one of those things and i know everybody's got a pool right now but i just had this perfect space for it so i just Absolutely. want a little chill above ground pool to hang out at yeah it's a good look it really is a good look did you check I out the like, bartender? I did check out the bartender. Barkeep. Fruity drink, please. Make it tasty. <laughs> and, you know, so... I had to include one of the giant plushies. Oh, so of course. So here we have a, a giant choppa, and he's about to put his big old mushroom on that grill. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if that's going to... That's going to cook down, buddy. I mean, it's going to take a little bit. It's going to fit, but he's going to try. He's going to try his best, just like us, just guy, eh, just like all of us. <laughs> exactly. Some little I love, snacks. I love the snack stands. I love how the plushies just, they, they tell a story. They always do. All right, now we'll go back around to the front and we'll we'll see the whole inside starting from the front door. Mm. I'm going to get a little peek over here too. That's so cool. Just so bright and we're here at a good time like i love the way that the flowers look in the daytime they just totally pop i really liked the blue and yellow like lunar new year stuff specifically the trees so yeah. that did definitely inspire the floral color scheme mm -hmm. yeah it's it's a really good really good look now you know and i know going into this house is where things usually get real Mm -hmm. Give this video a big old thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what you enjoyed so far. Val, after you. 
I'm going to actually just let you go in first and kind of take in that front room. Okay. Um, there's, I mean, it, I'm very clean core practical, core, so there's a little spot right in the middle where you can kind of stand and, and look at everything. And this front room and the Ooh. bathroom that we're going to see next, um, this front room, the bathroom, and the like formal sitting room over to your right, those have essentially been almost exactly the same since they were first built. I've tweaked a few things. I've, you know, kind of upgraded some of the sections and swapped out a few things, but the positioning and most of the design and furniture are still the same. So I am going to let you know without a shadow of a doubt there is no cusp you are 100 percent practicor <laughs> you can't claim clean core anymore you're 100 percent practicor I, i'm telling you once i figured it out i was like oh no <laughs> i'm having an, a minor identity crisis i mean well, just it's true. it is it is the you know at least for my space i want to have that realism i want it to feel like a real house not a fantasy yeah house. Yeah, and I totally feel that you nail that. You nail that concept 100%. The way that you've placed the couches, the lighting, the rugs, the floor, the the plants, the way that you've decorated the bookcases, how you've staged the plushies, like this is this is very impressive. It, you know, I will be honest with you, Practicor homes don't get enough love. Everybody just runs to Cluttercore homes and they're just like, look at how much stuff I can put in this corner. That's all fine and dandy, but when you kind of get to this level of realism, it just makes your brain relax. And it makes you go, ah. Yes, it makes you go, ah. <laughs> Dash nice. I love it. I love a good ooh plot. Oh, wait, come back. Ah, all right. Wrong way. You missed you missed the bathroom um, behind this beautiful Maji Market screen that I really hope I'm able to get another one of, and I hope everybody else gets it this time around. It is the best screen in the game. It but was so close also, to the wall, the wall, I thought paper. that it was intentionally blocking it. So I was like, <laughs> other than ah. the wallpaper in there, that bathroom has been pretty much the same. I swapped out the towel rack for a mirror that used to be there, Ooh. and the Emberborn wall art used to be capital chic, but otherwise, it's the same. Same, um, but it has a nice little clean core sight line if you look out that bay window. It's just lovely. And this wallpaper is is very challenging to to work with. Uh the way that, you know, the way that it's it has a lot going on. Yeah, that is that is a good that's a good sight line. I will I say that sight lines are not exclusive to clean core. Practicor can have sight lines as well. Oh, it has to. Yeah. It's a must. But you got you got box. all your colors coordinated and jukeboxing. All right, I'm allowed to go in here now, right? Yeah? Yes. Okay, good. I like I really like the way that you handle your lighting it's it's not all in one place but you draw your eye to certain things and this little this little you know hadari spot over here it's it's like it's elegant it's elegant thank you thank you i appreciate that um i don't like how warm a lot of the lighting is at least for a plot right that is mostly blue it definitely tends to wash it out um, and it also kind of blows the red tones out as well so i tried to be really mindful and i found that the ravenwood spotlights are the coolest lighting and by that i mean like temperature cool <laughs> that you right, can right. Get. yeah of course yeah i got you so yeah i i appreciate that and the fact that like one of the cool ways that uh pun intended that you can use lighting in paleo is by mixing cool with warm lighting it creates it creates a very special effect, in my opinion. Definitely. Um, hey, is my fish are my fish working for you? Nope. Oh, but they're working for me. That's such a bummer. <laughs> that's okay. We got three uh three spools of thread. But you know, it's a it's it's one of those things playing a early access game is there's there's always bugs, sometimes a little bit more obvious than others, but 
we get the idea. And I, I think that like the way that you had it set up with the two shells is really, it's really creative. Thank you. I think if I had more fish, I would probably be a little bit um, bummed out, but that's literally the only three fish I have grouped together. Um, nice. And all of the fish I have are just in those little tiny tanks because I'm not much of a fisher. So I'm like, eh, it's fine. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Ah, nice. Thank you for answering my next question. Oh, my least favorite skill? No. My next question was, where are we going next? Oh, oh, we're going into here. Um, nice. I've kind of always called this my bedroom. I don't know that it necessarily is my bedroom, but it's, I like it. Considering the fact that you have blue and yellow outside, and this room is blue and yellow, I would have to say this is probably your room. Yeah, I, it's definitely the master bedroom of the house, for sure. Yeah. That is cool. And uh, actually behind the bed, there's another little room. Is it accessible? It oh, is. it is accessible. And a master bedroom has got to have a bathroom. The en suite. That's cool. I really like the dynamic wallpapers in small spaces. They they really come out. They really show their their colors a lot better. But the fact that you have this accent wall here, too, it frames this doorway like this particular bed. I know it was a it was a chase for so long, mm -hmm. uh, but. Yeah, you frame that in very well. That is cool. That's one of those like tricks about that bed is if you turn it around. You can have uh, you could use that as part of your decoration. Yeah, and I, I just really liked the idea of kind of having a little, not necessarily a secret bathroom, although obviously it ended up that way, mm -hmm. but just sort of having it tucked away and hidden. Um, I hadn't, we didn't have building blocks yet. I hadn't figured out how to do practical doors that I really like. And that was the, the best way I could come up with. I mean, it's practical separation of space using the tools that you have. And that's, that's cool. I'm That's considering really cool. using that trick again in my challenge plot that we have coming up this month, but we'll see. Oh. I'm not 100% sure on it yet. Okay. <laughs> I just, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, everything's so, so lovely to look at. It's so cool. Like, it is. It's I mean, it, it, those of you right? who are on the other end of the screen, can you all agree with me that this is a type of design that just makes your brain relax? Like, it's so clean and but it's not necessarily clean core. It's practical, like it's a working functional kitchen. It is laid out. You got lighting, you got fans. Like there's a lot of logic that goes into practical homes. For sure, for sure. And this is definitely one of those spaces where I would love to have more items to decorate these counters, to put stuff on the bookshelves. Like I still want things very neat, mm -hmm. but I would love to have more item space to elaborate on the details. I know, but it's like you tell a story in just a, a, a very, a very digestible way. Did you figure out what's happening here? Yes. I'm jealous. <laughs> Only the freshest of sushi for my Cernic boys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy, you can't get any fresher than that. Wow. That's just got dark. And then, yeah, this door just leads out back to the garden. Again, very practical for a kitchen to do that. Oh, yeah. Garden to table. Exactly. Although, yeah, well, I was going to say, it's like you got a long way to walk to the ocean, but uh, there's a pond out there. <laughs> I'll let you go down this hallway and get that mm. nice view. Yes, that's a good view. Good and framed. Ah, yes. The bug, heart, your bug courtyard. Can't talk. I really... It is. I think this is so cool. It's got a lot of movement. You got so many things that are framed here. The way that you've mixed in the different bugs. 
and just kind of looking like this is one of my favorite things about Palea is celebrating your accomplishments. And I love this tree. This tree is just such a cool thing just to have at the end of a sight line. You got all these pavers here. The pavers are slightly wonky size wise, but I don't think you can really tell. It's just the bug right now. You know, I don't think anybody can tell. <laughs> they, they fit a lot neater. Ah, yeah, yeah. Did you get a view of the, the fancy bugs over on the side? These plushies here? Or you have fancier oh, bugs? Oh, you got fancier I bugs do. off here I to the side? Just this uh, this pretty one over here that has like the rainbow tip butterfly and all the pretty ones. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, this is what kind of reminded me about, you know, celebrating your accomplishments in Palea. You have these bookshelves. You have you're highlighting that these are special catches and you got your trophies like right up top with the with appropriate lighting. Like this is a really cool display to show off. Yeah. I love my buggies. That is awesome. This little space back here is empty. It will hopefully, if we get item limits raised, eventually be a study of some sort, library study. Nice. That's cool, though. I mean, I you know, everyone loves to show off homes that are just like, in a way, they're not realistic to the point of showing that these are some things that like I'm still working on. You know what I mean? And I think that that's important for people that are just starting out. It's like, you don't just, like you said earlier, you've been working on this plot for over a year or, I mean, the better part of a year anyways. Yeah, pretty close to a year. Uh, and this is the kind of plot that doesn't happen overnight. So temper it's everybody's been a lot like. Of hours and love in the making. And I have another little bonus. If you want to come sit on this bench right next to me, you okay. can get a really nice view of the bugs in front of you. That is a really nice view. Do you find yourself just kind of like contemplating bugs and paleo? As a DevOps engineer, I do all the time. <laughs> oh, those kind of bugs, absolutely. Ayo! Sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> but yeah, I would also love to have more space um, in this outside edge of the courtyard and maybe some inside for some flowers. But um, the main feature here is the bugs. And I've got that covered, so I like it. Yeah, that. absolutely. And this is the other wing of the house. Oh, man. Whoa. This is... Again, like, the lighting, the wallpaper choices as I'm just kind of panning around. I mean, everything just, it, it totally feels like it would be, it'd be a whole place, you know? Yeah, I mean, I've got the the front room and the formal sitting room, but I really wanted like an informal um, gathering area where you could like play games and just sit and do whatever, you know, chill out. And yeah. this all also leads into like the back um, party area of the outside. But you've also got to have a restroom, right? Uh, of a course. real place like this would have a restroom in here. Of course. Off to the side, guest restroom, you know. No bathtub. But yeah, a little powder room, right? I dig it. I really do. And then there's this uh, this other bedroom in here. This isn't for anybody in particular. Just a nice little bedroom. Man, growing up, I feel like, a, you know, this is like going over to your rich friend's house that's always clean and you're just like, I've never, ever had, you know, my house this clean ever. <laughs> Honestly, that's probably why I gravitate towards that aesthetic. This is a really cool guest, guest bedroom, though. Thank you. 
uh, again, more decor would be great just to kind of flesh things out. I wish I could put some more things on the desk and and kind of scattered around, but I like it. Yeah. It's that kind of it's that kind of guest bedroom that is just you want people to feel at home and you got all the amenities and, and everything and I know like uh one trip me and my wife took to to see my my grandmother like she had my she had my mother like iron the pillowcases and the sheets and everything and I was like I didn't have to do all that now but it's just that kind of that that level of hospitality you know what I mean Mm -hmm. I had a, I had a friend who was getting married at her her mom's house and her mom lives in another state and uh, <laughs> insisted on uh, the mom, not the person getting married, yep. <laughs> insisted yep. on power washing her driveway for, in order. To <laughs> nice. I was like, that is a level of, of prepared and clean that I will never be in my life. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm just taking another little pan around this this cool gaming area. And I had to put all my plaques over here as well. Yeah, it's it's a it's a really nice look for this space. I'm not usually one of like a here's a trophy room with every single trophy I have in it, mostly because again, I, I tend to gravitate towards a more realistic type of, of decor. And in real life, I would use those things to decorate multiple spaces. But I did just want to have a little nod to everything that I've I've done in Palea and I was only a little bit annoyed that I had to spend guild points <laughs> on a fishing plaque before I've even gotten my chest of pearls but it's fine it's okay I'm not mad yeah no definitely not to me this comes off like a gaming room and you have collectibles right yeah, exactly. you've got like a collectible pickaxe you got a collectible axe you got you know, a shovel that you got from like pre-ordering a game, right? You know, this is this is like your displays of all your your geekery. I was really happy when I got this pirate map. I was like, oh, this is gonna look great on a game table. Oh, totally, yeah. Yeah, totally. All right, Bill. Where to next? That is most of the decorated stuff, but I do have a couple of spaces over here that hopefully will be decorated at some point. That just sort of finish everything off. So the courtyard leads directly into these pavilions, which are going to be like a really nice sort of adult hangout space with the hot oh, tub, nice. as opposed to a little bit more of the like backyard party vibe. Mm hmm. So there will probably be like a bar in here and some nice seating and things like that. Yeah. And then you got the baby. You stand, yep. You can stand pretty much right at the bridge and not scare the baby away. That's nice. I do have some spiral stairs over on the side that go up to the top of the gazebo. But at the moment, there's nothing up there. I did have some stuff up there. That's but, good to you know. know. Item limit problems. Yeah, right. And then that's the thing, like with with spaces like these, like this is one of the new buildings in the game, the conservatory. There's a lot of things that you can do here. And when you are at item cap, until they raise the limit, you have to prioritize. I uh, like you don't have a choice as to what what stays and what goes. Uh, and it's it's within those boundaries, I think. I think that's where some of the magic of Paleo comes out as people start to get creative. But everything yeah. that we've seen so far, though, has been very well executed and it looks like it has a purpose. It doesn't feel unfinished. It takes a lot to kind of come up with this kind of layout, but it's it's asymmetrical in a way and still balanced. So you have lots of trees and everything that just kind of cover the parts that you don't necessarily want people to be able to see but at the same time like your trees aren't bleeding into your house like they feel they feel natural okay can i tell you all a little secret 
is one of my favorite parts of the entire tour. It's Q&A time. We're going to sit down, ask her a bunch of questions, and it's going to be so much fun. So Q&A time, let's get the deets. One of the first things I like to do with Q&A time is just, I like to go over, just review all the things that I enjoyed. Uh, this is 100% practical in the best way. Like you have lighting nailed down, you got your wallpapers nailed down. Uh, the way that you place your furniture, you know, and the way that you have organized everything, there's logic, there's clean lines, you have sight lines, but at the same time, you have a, a good command of terminating those sight lines for the sake of hiding certain things like using your your bed uh to kind of like block off you know the little the ensuite and some of the screens to kind of to kind of do that uh to separate like you know a bathroom or uh, another space like with the the maji market screen and everything just looks it looks cozy, but it doesn't, you know, even though it's, it's practical, it doesn't look, uh, too clean. If that makes sense. Like it, it looks, oh, yeah. it still looks lived in, but it doesn't look like, um, it's like, it's not sterile. You know what I mean? Like it's, okay. it's so it's lovely is what it is. I feel like when I decorate, at least when I decorate for myself, because I love decorating other styles, as you know, I enjoy that, um, even yes. though it's challenging for me. But when I'm decorating a space for myself, I really like that very like clean magazine sort of aesthetic to start with. I want a very clean core base, and then I want to be able to build on that. Mm -hmm. um, definitely like the the structure of the space is is kind of what I like to nail down first because the size of my space determines how much decoration I can actually use. Mm -hmm. So obviously with this plot, once I figured out my my permanent layout essentially, then I could start completely filling up those spaces and tweaking things and didn't quite get to finish them all. But um, yeah, you can see the spaces that are a little bit more lived in, a little bit more decorated towards really those first few rooms in the house uh, would love to have a little bit more of that detail throughout as well but definitely starting from that sort of if this was in a magazine or it being staged for <laughs> for showcasing <laughs> real estate I, I like that as a base so my first question is going to be around designing you mentioned just like the size of places kind of dictate your your vision, so to speak. Uh, what do you think was the hardest place in your house to decorate? Honestly, the hardest would probably have been the get like the um, game room, mm -hmm. not because it was exceptionally difficult, but because it was the last completely empty space that I knew I was going to furnish and that needed to be furnished. So there was a lot of um, finagling shall we say to mm -hmm. to get yeah. things where i needed them to be for that to be a complete space so let us know like i'm curious about your process right when you have an empty space do you do any kind of planning outside of paleo do you sketch it out on paper or you know or do you just kind of like play around with it and and feel fill it out i have never not once not a single time sketched, written anything down. <laughs> um, I tend to start with what I want to see when I walk into the plot. So for me, the the entrance um, is going to determine everything. So mm -hmm. as you know, like on my witchy plot, the entrance, the house is set pretty far back in. Right. And you have this really enclosed wooded area that you walk through. And as you walk through it, it opens up into where you see the house coming into view. So that's pretty much always where I start is, is the front and the outside and where things are going to be. But I tend to do it very intuitively. And as far as putting the structures together, mm -hmm. I try to think again, I, how did we not figure out I was practical for? Anyway, I try to think about <laughs> where things would naturally be, right? Yeah. Um, are you gonna have a bedroom immediately off of the kitchen? Probably not. 
so Stranger i sort of things an have idea um when i'm like putting the house together of, of where things are going to go that doesn't always stay the same mm -hmm. uh, i like to say that i build and decorate very intuitively in mm -hmm. that i get inspiration from something and I'll, I'll build something and then it sort of sets something else into motion and i just keep doing that until i'm done so my next question is going to be sort of uh this one's going to be kind of off off script here if your decoration style had an item that was a catchphrase what would it be mm, what do you mean like what is what is a common item that that you feel you have to have in your design for it to be you um, probably, probably the capital chic armchairs, actually. In, nice. in real life, I tend to gravitate very much towards like a, a mid-century modern vibe. Mm -hmm. Um, and those chairs are just so MCM that they make me very happy. Also, mm -hmm. the industrial bookshelves, I feel like are very underrated. They're very clean. They're very practical. Um, they look nice combined with almost any other um like group of items in the game mm -hmm. so probably those two things that's interesting that's really cool very very cool this was definitely a lot of fun to to tour and i've always known just with the challenge plot that you did with the speed tours that you've done the caliber of design that you've that you brought forth but getting to see like your particular space has been a very very cool treat for me and everybody else that's out there on youtube so thank you val thank you it's been it's been really nice finally having you come and see the whole thing at least as finished as it possibly can be yes w wip tm <laughs> I actually realized I um, I didn't lie exactly, but but I misspoke a little bit earlier when I said I'd never written anything down or planned it. Oh, I know that was you were holding up the sarcasm sign like huge. Well, no, that was true. That was true. Oh, OK, except for the pit of chaos. In except our for the pit of chaos. Content. Yes. So isn't that funny that the most organized thing that I've ever made is the most chaotic? That is like that is irony irony does not befall you now i got I never one thought about that before but interesting i got one more question for you and this one this one is uh is pretty interesting let's go into this empty room real quick the empty room that you have like attached to the courtyard so i always ask this question uh i always ask this question quite a bit but when you have this perspective here of an empty room, kind of like an empty canvas, right? Walk us through briefly, what are the first things that you would do in this room if you didn't have like item cap? Like just let's say that this is probably one of the first rooms that you're decorating. Yeah, if I have um, a big space like this and it has smaller spaces attached, I will pretty much always do the smaller spaces first. And it's not something I think about. I didn't think about it until right now, but I'm actually, you know, working in my my practical house for a challenge plot. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I did um, were the two. I have two spaces in my practical kitchen that were finished before I've even figured out what I'm going to do with the rest of it. Yeah. So over here is going to be another little study nook kind of similar to the one I have in my workshop, but obviously focused more on, you know, quiet studying, reading rather than workshopping. Mm -hmm. And this I'm not entirely sure, um, but probably just bookcases kind of yeah. throughout here. So the reason why I wanted to ask that is is just like when you're starting out and you don't you're not sure what to do, right? One of the strategies that you can take from this video as inspiration is to start with small spaces first um, big spaces can be extremely intimidating on trying to figure out what to fill but if you take bell's advice and you start with something small then you can be like hey i have these two nooks done now i can start tying things together in the bigger space thank you bell absolutely and i will mention one other thing kind of related to that i don't really love large size rooms 
which is not very clean core of me because I'm not clean core apparently, no. but I, I actually really <laughs> like working with the medium and the small spaces yeah. because the large rooms are almost just too grand for the way that I build and design. Yeah. Um, even in this room, this bathroom was done before anything else was, was put into place. And yeah, that it makes, it, it really does. In, in the words of, many of your practical colleagues it just makes sense <laughs> yep and i love this little view here too just looking into the the tree yeah absolutely well those of you who are still here don't forget to give this video a big old thumbs up leave me a comment let me know what was your favorite part and uh if you have any other questions that you'd like me to ask other paleo tour guides let me know until next time take care bye bye thanks guys Thank <laughs> you.